And if Amr ibn al-As could not stare at him as much as he desired, and this is a beautiful point by the way as well, most of the descriptions of the Prophet they come from the younger Sahaba, not from the older Sahaba. And of the greatest or the most uh, explicit descriptions is from Anas ibn Malik, who was a little kid. So Anas does not have the same type of, if you like, emotions that the elder Amr ibn al-As has. And Anas ibn Malik, he, he was introduced to the Prophet when he was seven years old. His mother came to him and she gifted her son as a servant. And basically Anas would wake up and run to the Prophet's house, stay there all day, and then go back to his mother's house. So he would serve the Prophet ﷺ, to fetch him water, do this and that for him. So this is Anas ibn Malik. And so Anas ibn Malik has given us one of the most explicit descriptions of the Prophet ﷺ. And this is found in uh, the Shama'id of At-Tirmidhi. Anas ibn Malik says that the Prophet ﷺ was neither very tall, such that he stood above the crowd, nor was he short, such that he would be ignored. He was in the middle. He was of a medium stature. And the Prophet ﷺ was neither extremely white, and nor was he a ruddy brown. Now, pause here for a while. The Arabs, they called what we call white, they called it yellow. They called it yellow. What we call white is the Caucasian color white. Okay? And this is generally called Asfar. And that's why they call the Romans Manul Asfar. They call the Romans the tribe of the yellow people. Just like over here, the American Indians, what do they call whites? Pale face, right? This is not a skin color that they're familiar with. Okay? Generally speaking, when the Arabs use the word white, it is a lightish brown. This is their, what they call white is a lightish brown. It's not the white that we consider Caucasian white. Okay, that white they called Asfar, which then was, it's not really white, it's yellowish to them. That's how they consider it. Okay, so the Prophet Sallallahu was a very lightish color of, of brown. The actual skin color that he had was a lightish color of brown. He, a lot of people say he was white. No, he's not white when we, the English word white, no. When we say the word white, that means he is Caucasian color. No, he wasn't. And by and large, the Arabs were not of that color, right? The Romans were of that color. The Arabs, they had a different color. So the Prophet had a lightish brownish color. So Anas is saying, neither was he purely on that side, nor was he ruddy brown, nor was he the rusty brown color. He was in the middle. The Prophet hair was not in curls, nor was it straight. It was firm hair, like most men's hair is. And Anas ibn Malik said that I never felt any velvet or silk softer than the hand of the Prophet ﷺ. His hand was very soft, softer than velvet and silk. And he said, nor did I smell a musk or a perfume more fragrant, fragrant than the sweat of the Prophet ﷺ. In other words, his natural odor that would emanate from him. The natural odor that would emanate from him, Anas ibn Malik said, I never smelled any fragrance more sweeter than this smell. And of course, you know that uh, Umm Salam and others, when the Prophet ﷺ would go to sleep, she would in fact collect his sweat in a jar. So it's hot, there's no AC, there's no fan, he's sweating. So she would collect this sweat in a jar, in a small bottle. Why? They would use it as perfume. They would use it as perfume. And they would also use it as medicine. Put it in a drop of water like this is their medicine. They put it in some water and they drink it. This is the Sahaba, they're living with them, they see with themselves, they, they smell. They see the reality of the, the miracle of the Prophet 